Over the last few years, South Africans have had to endure more and more load shedding due to the country's power crisis. As coal supplies dwindle and the environment continues to suffer the effects of carbon emissions, the solution rests in renewable energy. As it turns out, wind ranks as the cheapest source of energy that we can extract from Mother Earth without harming her. Gramstown locals have experienced some of the heaviest load shedding of all, and, although harsh weather is a near second in terms of complaints from residents, the town's windy surrounds could be the solution to energy woes. An area just outside Gramstown, known as Vineck, which literally translates to Windy Corner, has recently become home to a brand new wind farm. Local entrepreneur and scientist Dr. Garth Cambray came up with the idea back in 2007. I was flying with my friend Andrew and we were flying over the power station because I wanted to get a photograph of the old power station where the meadery is to look at the substation. And then after we flew there, we actually flew here over this hill and we nearly crashed the microlight because there are incredibly strong winds here. And, and um, so as we came over, basically Andrew explained that, that, the, um, that, that this area basically has a strange funneling effect on wind and it's, it's well known that you shouldn't fly an airplane and plane over it. And that was, um, that was basically how we got the idea of the wind farm here, was, was through nearly crashing a, an airplane into that mountain on that side. The project has come a long way since its initial inception. Jeff Antrobus owns some of the property on which the turbines are situated and has been involved since day one. That has taken um, nearly 14 months. started in August 2014 and is not actually quite complete yet, but one could say it's 99% complete. And the only thing that still needs to be done is there's at least one of the turbines that had a part that has to be replaced. But all the physical construction was pretty well finished after, after 13 months. Although it seems set for success, the Vinec project has encountered its share of difficulties along the way. From environmental risk analyses to concerns about their aesthetic impact, the turbines have cleared all obstacles so far. Agricultural farmers here, they had a problem with that, as well as from some of the challenges we picked up or some of the things that we picked up during our impact assessment was the noise. Uh, some people had, were very cautious about the noise and uh, they were also very cautious about the visual impact of it. Staring down this 112 meter structure wasn't everyone's cup of tea. The wind turbines are relatively safe for human beings, out of reach of even most aeroplanes. But what about the birds that share the sky with their gigantic blades? A 2013 study found that half a million birds and over 800,000 bats are killed every year by wind turbines in the United States alone. However, Professor Adrian Craig says it all has to do with location. We realized well from the findings in other countries that the siting of the turbines is very critical. Here we're not dealing fortunately with migration routes. There are areas where birds, particularly large birds, birds of prey, are very concentrated during migration times. And one of the notorious wind farms is in the United States, in California, which is actually on a raptor migration route, and that has caused a lot of mortality. This situation, we don't expect a major problem. There aren't many busted cranes which pass through this area. They sparse here. The one species which could be affected, which is quite regular in this area, is the black harrier, which is a South African endemic, an endangered bird, and it flies at the sort of height that it would be most likely to be affected and would be looking down at the ground as it goes along because it's looking for prey on the ground. Visible from up to 20 kilometers away, it's no wonder that these huge contraptions instill caution in both man and bird, but they are impressive. All of this equipment weighs a lot. Each of these things weighs 12 tons. 
the nacelle itself weighs 40 tons and then there's a gearbox on the inside which weighs another 60 tons and that gearbox um, turns the whole thing to face the wind and they of course have to have some lights in the back so aeroplanes don't fly into it. Rest assured though that Grahamstown's new neighbours are pulling their weight when it comes to aiding the country's dire power situation. The renewable sector has so far attracted over 190 billion rands worth of investment for South Africa, 28% of which is much needed foreign investment. This means that the country has made significant progress towards achieving its goal of 30% clean energy by 2025. Vinek is poised to make a big impact on the Gram Sound grid. The town contains under 13,500 households and with the potential to generate 24 megawatts of power. The wind farm could generate enough to power up to 16,000 households. But what does this all mean for Gramstown in the near future? Very good news for load shedding because <laughs> Eskom will not be able to load shed Gramstown, you know, if the wind is blowing. If the wind's not blowing, well, then it's tough tacky and, uh, you know, it'll be <laughs> business as usual or no business as usual. If I can be specific to Gramstown, I will let you in on a little secret. Uh, you might not see your friend load shedding again, but uh, that's the immediate impact for the Gramstown low people. But uh, from a more broader perspective, it's clean energy. It's green. We use the wind. While the light at the end of the load shedding tunnel is enough cause for celebration, the responsibility is still on each individual to do their part in protecting the environment. Well, I, I just, um, I've always been fascinated with um, renewable energy and, and um, leading by example. So I try to do the things that other people should start looking at doing at some point because if somebody has to start. So I've just made renewable fuel and put it into my car and do that and then other people started copying what I do and, and um, I'm doing the same thing with, with fuel for petrol vehicles and um, with the electricity it was more difficult because you know one has to actually involve investors and things like that but on a personal level at my house I'm about to take it off the grid I grow all my own food I, you know I do these trying to just live by a specific set of principles and uh, have a recycled dog 